platform, welcome to Summer in the City. Summer in the City! Yeah! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Today we'll be playing Never Have I Ever. I have never, or I have. Never have I ever. I have never. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to grips with it. Woo! <laughs> I'm hitting up the penguin stand, signing some books. And it's very, very busy. I don't know if you can see behind, but it's, there's quite a lot of people in this hall, and uh, I'm not very good with crowds, so help. Never have I ever had a crush on a fictional character. Excuse me, who who has never had a crush on a fictional character? I have, have, have a million times. I think every character I've ever had a crush on has been fictional. What's the point in real people when you've got fictional ones? <laughs> Just all of them. I mean, when I read The Time Traveler's Wife for the first time, oh my God, like I had never been so in my feelings. Edward Cullen, he got me through my teen years, you know? <laughs> Simon in Love, Simon. God. I didn't read it. <laughs> you watched it? I watched it. I well saw the movie. Read the book. Gotta read the book. That's on my list. Mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> um, I used to have a big crush on Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the boyfriends from the Babysitter's Club. Like, I don't know which one specifically, but I loved them all. Yeah. I think I probably had like pretty extreme crush on Ron Weasley. I don't know, it's just some, something about him. I was a Fred girl. I liked Fred. Really? I remember yeah. Tris Pryor from the Divergent oh series was a massive crush for me. Oh, I had a massive I mean, you had crush a on Cedric Paul. Diggory as oh well. Oh my God, Cedric Diggory. I'm not even kidding, like, <laughs> marry me. All of them. All of them? Yeah, well, not all of them. I mean, not like Bowser. I mean, how long have we got? Mr. Darcy, Mr. Bingley as well. Uh, you know, the lesser known hottie. If Jamie from Outlander, the book, is watching, even Only though- the book? Uh, well, the TV show too, yeah. but not the actor from the TV show. Okay. The character Jamie, okay. as he exists in all yeah. universes. If he is watching, like, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. We all know what I mean. We all know. Get in yeah. touch. Yeah. Oh, I, I have. Like, <laughs> I have. But then you finish the book and then you feel like you've lost your friend or your boyfriend. There's no more. Like, that's it. You will never meet them. Never have I ever read a book in a weird location. Okay, let's be real. Everyone in the world has read a book on the toilet. So if that's a weird location, then I have. Is pooping weird? No, everyone poops. No, that's normal. I've read a book on the toilet before. Is that weird? But actually, even with the lid down, because actually if you're at an airport or something, you know? Is that weird? Toilets aren't weird. I'm sure that's where most reading gets done. Always while pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Is it weird if I only read while pooping? I've never I mean, read a book while how much reading do you get done? A lot. I poop a lot. I mean, probably. I've read books like Inside Trees. Is that weird? Like Inside the Hollow of a Tree? That's pretty weird. Yeah. It's in the bath because then you could drop it in the... Drop it in the bath and it gets wet. I've never read in the bath and I've never understood. My sister used to do that and then you'd always get like these wet books and you could tell if she'd been reading in the bath. And I'm like, what you just know? I've read in like the top of a ship that's going on the sea, so. I was always the kid in primary school who would, when people were like having a party, I'd be in the other, other room or like up on a tower somewhere reading like, at the time it was like Asterix and Obelix. It wasn't exactly heavy fiction, but like, I guess that's the strangest, that's a half. That's a kind of have never. I mean, depends what weird is. I used to love reading books on the windowsill. My parents have a really wide windowsill. I used to love just getting in a little nook, devouring an entire book. That was lovely. I don't know what's weirder than that. What did you do? We had to do a thing for English where we had to read a book in a weird location and I did it inside of my fridge. I read a book inside a fridge. So. I mean, I was going to say the beach, but I think you just trumped that. I'm that the fridge? Yeah. I didn't win either. Never have I ever pretended to read a book I haven't. Uh, I have done that. I did it for my Oxford interview. Uh, I pretended that I read a couple of books. I put them on my personal statement and I was frantically skimming them on, in the car on the way to the interview. Fortunately, they didn't ask me about them, but I, that, don't do that. That's just, like, definitely don't do that. I hope none of my teachers are watching yeah. this, but I definitely said that I'd read Hard Times and I had not. Yeah, I'll try to sound like more smart and be like, yeah, I've read that. My um, GCSE English Lit, I totally said I read the book oh. and was like, I'm writing Maybe an not. essay about a book I've never read. I just read the blurb. <laughs> In my defense, the only time I've ever done that is because I was supposed to have finished it for class and it was going to take me like another two weeks to read. Cough, Wuthering Heights, cough. <laughs> so, I have. <laughs> I 
like, oh yeah, sure, uh, 1884, is that the date? Sure, yeah, I read that one, so. I still pretend to have read 1984 to this day. I was don't. it 1984, did I get that wrong? 1884 was a great date, by the way. I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> what book? Define read, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I listen to audiobooks a lot. <laughs> I have. Uh, I can't do War and Peace. It's hard. And even the adaptation I struggled with. And I do love a period drama. I've definitely pretended to read books, watch films, TV shows. Anything that makes me look like a good person or a better person or like a more cultured person, I'll lie about it. So right yeah, definitely. I don't think you can be a literature student and not oh. pretend to yeah. have read a book that you actually haven't. Yes. <laughs> yeah, quite a few actually. Um, this is really shameful. I've never read Middlemarch, which is one I've constantly pretended to have read. I think for the longest time I pretended to have read Catcher in the Rye. I did finally read it, but like it took, yeah, it, I lied about it for a while. Mm. This sounds really bad. I think it was for school. I think it was The Woman in Black because I'm horrified of anything scary and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't make myself. Yeah. yeah. I just pretended to read Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> it's only 100 pages long and I was like falling asleep. Oh, and Fahrenheit 451. I really should reread it. But I was like falling asleep in the lesson. I was like, yeah, and I know exactly yeah. what's going on. It's I more no for clue. school, not for yeah. like general Personal reading. Personal reading, I'm like so interested. And then it comes to school where they're like forcing it on you. I'm like, don't make me do this. Yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever cried while creating. Vulnerability is beautiful. Like, we don't have to be ashamed of this. It's, it's good to feel things. It's good to be authentic and vulnerable. So more crying, it's fine. No, no shame about crying, pretty much all the time. <laughs> I've cried while reading though. That's, I cry that's a... every 10 minutes. So. True. Are you even <laughs> creating if you're not crying? There are tears. There are always tears. It's mostly during the editing process when you realize all your footage is corrupted. Yeah. <laughs> and then you definitely want yeah. to cry. I have. I can name the chapters. I can name the moments. Tears were shed. I feel like if you're not feeling the emotion, then people aren't gonna feel the emotion when reading it. You gotta feel the emotion. So in my first book, uh, Undercover Princess, there's a moment where Ellie and Lottie exchange gifts on a balcony. And that, that bit really resonated with me as somebody who took a long time to find like a really close friend and someone who I felt like I had a like soul connection with. Um, and even when I read over that bit now, it, it hits me deep. <laughs> yeah. Is this like childbirth or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, thankfully not. I definitely have. I recently wrote a short story and I was really in a very emotional place when I was writing about the subject. And uh, after I read it back, I was like, oh God, this is so sad. <laughs> what happens to this girl? Like, oh God, it's terrible. All the time. You try burning your fingers, slicing off your fingers when you're creating. Um, writing a book is really hard. I've written three now. I'm about to start a fourth, fingers crossed. And every time I do it, I'm like, why am I doing this? But then I quickly forget it. I think it's like when people have a baby, they always say, you forget the labor, you forget the hard bit. It is a painful process, but it's amazing. And nothing will ever beat the feeling of going into a bookshop, wherever you are in the world, and seeing yourself there. It's nuts. It butterflies me every single time, and it is just the best. So. If you want to write books, if you love books, write books. We should all write more books. More books, more books. And if we're talking about the actual process of making a video, when your render export fails, I've cried <laughs> many times. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I started crying at that new video I was making the other day. Like it just is emotional, bawling. slightly emotional. <laughs> all the time. I used a lot of my own experience for my book. Uh, my eating disorder recovery, my all my years dieting and being at war with my body and tapping into that was really emotional at times. And I think my main motivation for carrying on even when it was emotional was I wanted to let people know that they aren't alone. They never have been, like it's never been your fault. How you feel about your body isn't your fault and you never deserved it. So I had to tap into my experience and look back and think, I didn't deserve to feel that way either. You know, five-year-old me didn't deserve to hate her body. And I think it was worth going through that emotional roller coaster for what came out at the end, even if one person reads it and knows that they aren't alone. Never have I ever wished I'd written someone else's book. All the time, I read so many books, mostly John Green novels, and I'm like, oh, I could have written this. I mean, I couldn't have, but I could have. Literally me with Harry Potter, I'm like, I could have been a billionaire. Oh, yeah. Oh. J.K. Rowling's no, Harry Potter! <laughs> I wish I'd written the whole Harry Potter series. Oh, God, yeah. 
that money though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want those Harry Potter millions, man. <laughs> Never have I ever borrowed a book and not returned it. Whose book have you not returned, Marion? Um, so I definitely still have like one of Rosanna's Richard Yates collections or something. Sylvia Plath. <laughs> Sylvia Plath, I haven't returned yet. Um, yes. Recently returned. It's just, sorry, it's been five years. <laughs> it looks so pretty on my shelf. Oh man, I'm really caught out right now. Gotta go, bye. <laughs> I have never. <laughs> I am one of those people that if someone steals my book, I know how much it hurts. <laughs> So, so you lost a child. Yeah, so I've I've never done that. No, neither. I've never done that. We're good people. I'm a bad person. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. I borrowed a book of Wurzel Gummidge from my secondary school library and then just kept it forever. I'm right. sure there's a library book somewhere from like oh, 20 years ago. Oh, you'll be fined like 20,000 pounds. This question is just making me look bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm so guilty of this. I'm even guilty of this about library books. I still feel bad about it. I think I owe my primary school library a good three, four books. I'm sorry. Maybe one day I'll give them, but I probably won't. I'm sorry. Now, I'm really, I get cross with people. My dad used to buy two or three of every book and he would write his name and the date he bought it and how much he bought it for. And he'd be so cross when he'd lend it and give it back. And I, I really don't like that. Sometimes I go into someone's house and I'll take it back. But I am a big fan of lending books. I think that's amazing to lend books, share the love, spread the love. But yeah, always got to give the book back, even if it's been 10 years. I have never. I am very good at returning the books I borrow. I'm usually the one who borrows them and then doesn't get them back. Yes, definitely have done that quite a few times. Um, books, video games, this kind of thing. It's not normally malicious. You just, you, a friend lends it and you take advantage of their kindness by forgetting that it's theirs in the first place and you just kind of subsume it into your collection. I have a book called First Light about uh, bombers in the Second World War that definitely isn't mine. And I, I know exactly whose it is, but you're not getting it back. A friend of mine lent me a book uh, three years ago and I found it on my bookshelf the day she came around for the first time in like a year. I just handed it to her and she was so happy to get it back that it was like I'd done a good thing instead of a bad thing, which was great. It was nice. like, I stole this for years, but now I'm giving it back to you, so I'm the good person here. I think I have one book on my shelf that I'm still supposed to give back to someone, but I just haven't given it back yet. Yeah. Doesn't mean I haven't returned it. It is still to happen in the future. Exactly. Until we die, there's always a possibility that we've done the right thing. Also, when people borrow from me, they're going on the list. I keep the list. You and have I a list? I might have a list. Like a library? I have a lovely book notebook that has a list in the back saying, books lent. Oh my god! Now I'm scared of you. Never have I ever been heavily influenced by another author or creator. Well, that's absolutely I have. Um, I think that's the definition of a good book, that it leaves you with a really in, kind of indelible mark on, on who you are and how you think. John Green, his young adult stuff has made a massive impression on me. Aldous Huxley was the uh, Brave New World I read when I was way too young and it made a huge impression on me. And um, Robert M. Piersig, uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. They really kind of, those two in particular changed the way I think. So absolutely I have. If you haven't, you're reading the wrong things. I have. Like, if anyone says no to that, they're lying. <laughs> So I read Harriet the Spy when I was younger, and so I started a diary, and I enjoyed it, and I wrote, wrote a diary up until I was a late teenager. I read, I can't remember what book it is, but it was one of the YouTuber books. I think it's the only one I read, and I was like, wow, I'm a write a book. I'm a do that. I'm a, I'm Have you? No. When I started writing, you used to just steal characters from my favorite stories and incorporate them in everything that I wrote, you know, like everything was set at Hogwarts, everything featured the famous five, etc. I get influenced by certain art authors like J.R.R. Tolkien, J.K. Rowling. There's so many authors and creators who influence my creativity. I mean, if you count fan fiction. <laughs> I have. I am a massive fan of Jamie Oliver, who isn't. I love that he makes everyone feel like they can cook and that's my big thing too. I grew up thinking that chefs were shouty men that um, didn't like each other in the kitchen and Jamie Oliver really inspired me to get your mates round, you know, ride around on a moped looking cool. I can't do that, but just cook for each other and spread love. As long as you are also giving them a nod and being like, you, you did it first, you're really good at this, I like you a lot, then it's fine. Then you're not like stealing their stuff. So shout out to Naomi Wolf, Linda Bacon, Laura Fraser, all these people who wrote amazing body positive books and inspired me to do what I do. Everyone is heavily influenced. Everyone has something that they 
love so much that they wish they'd made it. Um, I mean, with credit, yes. So you're admitting that you've stolen intellectual property? With credit, yes. <laughs> well, I haven't. If the, if the police are listening. I haven't. Never have I ever finished a whole project and then started over. <gasps> I am 100% like a recovering perfectionist. So I definitely have like entire chapters of my book completely scraps. I'm trying harder to not do that anymore. I think it's really important to know that what you put out there has value, you know, even if it's not the perfect of the perfect. So I'm trying to shift this, maybe this next year. <laughs> no, because I'm too lazy. <laughs> if I finish the project and it's wrong, it all together. I go, oh well, I tried. Oh, I've done this. Absolutely I have. I've, I've tried to write the same book about three times. I've got about 70,000 words in and I was like, no, let's get rid of it. Future Simon, when you're watching this, I promise that I will get round to it and I will finish that book on maybe the fifth try. Yeah, yeah we both have. Yeah. I'm my own worst critic, I think. Redoing stuff is always a thing when you're creating anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm too lazy to do st stuff like that. If I have done it, then it's done. All I have to say is university. <laughs> If you are struggling, I think it is so brave to go, it's just not working anymore and move away from it. But if you've tried everything you can and it's not creating, um, don't throw it away, don't burn it, don't get all drama queen. Um, put it away and come back to it on a rainy day, six months later, a year later, 10 years. It could be your number one bestseller. I feel attacked by this question. I feel like someone is, this entire thing has been a ruse to attack my entire lifestyle. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Penguin. Thank you so much, we're leaving. Wow. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. A massive thanks to all the YouTubers that joined in as well. Their links will be in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our YA newsletter. See you later, bye.